Good afternoon, Doc, and Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy everything else that you celebrate. How are you? I am on this side of eating a lot, and laying around, and <laughs> being out of routine. You know, it's it's great. Our, our family always just chills, and we also had a family friend uh, stay with us this weekend, so that was fun. So yeah, how about you, Queenie? That's fun. Uh, well, actually, I'm not good at resting, so uh, I have gotten a lot of incredible things accomplished. I have uh, realized that people are uh, wishing for things to change in their lives and their businesses. So a couple people have reached out. How can I this? What about that? Can you take a look at this and critique it? And that's always so funny to me because um, <laughs> I told you before on this actual call that I YouTube question so much that YouTube <laughs> says, Catherine, you have reached your limit for YouTube questions today. And so I keep doing that. And it's just so funny to me that people ask me when there's Google and YouTube, which would give you a much better answer. Well, and it's so, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no kidding. And so, but anyway, it's very fun uh, to see, and people are starting the new year, and I'm going to this, and I'm going to that, and I'm going to something, and I'm always like, good, I hope that you do. Let's let's get her done, hunker down. What are you going to do differently? And sometimes the answer is, well, I don't know. So is that how it is with uh, in your businesses that you actually have people want to do something, but they want you to do it for them? Oh, yes, all the time, with the exception of the gardening. The gardening, um, I actually do... It, it depends on what they want, but I actually do some of it for them. So, but yeah, in the naturopathy, um, everybody wants a quick fix um, now, yesterday, and they don't want to have to work on it. So, you know, that's yeah. a funny thing that you say that everybody's been eating stuff Thursday, yeah. Friday, Saturday, maybe even yeah. Sunday, and now they're feeling like ill. And I always just wonder about that. Is this a surprise? You know, it's one of those cause effect things for me. You eat this, you know what it's going to do to you. It might taste great for a second, but after that, it does stuff to you and makes you feel sluggish, lethargic, whatever that looks like. I'm always so surprised that it's a shock. Well, you know, in some respects, there are people that are still not awake or aware of their bodies, you know, because if nothing major has happened, they're yeah. just not aware and they keep moving, you know, they keep doing what they're doing. So... Mm -hmm. But I have a question for you. Um, I guess I can take a question today. Okay. <laughs> Do you think this would change your life? Oh, yes, it would change my life. Yes, <laughs> it would, sister. <laughs> Happy National Fruitcake Day. Oh, my gosh, Doc. Thank you so much. I didn't even send you a card. But Happy National Fruitcake Day to you, too. <laughs> That's a you pretty know, picture of a few fruitcake because how I remember fruitcakes looking. I picked the prettiest one because I will not. I, I you know, on this picture out of, out of that fruitcake, I might steal the cherries off the top. But that's about as far as I go on fruitcake. What do you think? I would be hard pressed even to go after that. Uh, what is the yellow thing? Maybe it's um, a candied something or other. Yeah. I, you know, it almost looks like a cherry, too. Maybe they dyed it yellow yellow dye number five hey okay. that's lovely I bet that's healthy too I'm sure it is um, somewhere it really it's a very pretty picture and like I say how I remember fruitcakes growing up they came in a funky little can and all the people that came to visit my grandmother for all the celebration stuff would bring her this flat funky colored green red kind of can and you open it up and it's uh, got ridged like cupcake paper around it and cellophane or some kind of stuff and that was her treat for hosting the party. And my, I remember that, but who would eat it? No offense. My husband swears that they just pass around the same fruitcake every year. <laughs> oh, oh no, that, you know what? My, some of my grandmother's fruitcakes might still be flying around. So that's good to you know. know. Yeah, that. I've never ventured. I'm not a big, um, in the Italian world, my mother made what she called soldier cookies, which were like a shortbread cookie. And then she put the candied cherry in the middle. That's as close to candied anything that I get because it's too, they're sticky, they're gross, they're loaded with sugar, they're, you know, but um, hmm. yeah, fruitcake was, I've never ventured into trying to make one or pass one on. I mean, I picked this picture because look, it's got frosting. How many fruitcakes do you see with frosting? Zero actually. And that's why I was wondering, it's a very pretty picture. For those of you who celebrate 
fruitcake day. We're thrilled for you. Yes. And so we'll I do send think this, ours over. Yeah. Yeah. This is a very lovely photo of said thing, but I, I, what is the, um, the cake part, like yellow yeah. cake, something or bread feel. I, I don't know. Cause they're very dense. Yeah. You know, that they're very, they're not fluffy, light lemony kind of cakes. They're dense as I recall. And so I wonder what the, um, I'm sure, you know, I'm sure there's flour in there and I'm sure there's some sugar in there, but who knows? I, I've never even wanted to look at a recipe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah seriously. Oh my gosh. I, that I, is I guess, um, yeah. That is a lovely <laughs> thing to celebrate National Fruitcake Day, the day after the weekend after Christmas. That, that is interesting. You know, maybe it's because of all the extra fruitcakes that are being passed around and saved for next year. You know, that's a lovely, a lovely way to think of it. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fruit oh. cakes. <laughs> yeah, <it's okay. laughs> Seriously, fruitcakes, there we are. And I, for those of you joining us, we are in Kansas City uh, area. And so this is the Country Club Plaza behind me. And if you have not yet visited Kansas City during Christmas, it's a great sight to see. Uh, the lights are turned on uh, Thanksgiving night, literally, like a, the whole city turns out. There are celebrities that do the three, two, one thing and and light the lights, and it's literally a shopping metropolis, a, a city of its own, technically. And it is just fun to see. And uh, someone captured this look because we've had glorious sunsets oh, uh, in Kansas City lately, and so I wanted to share that with the people who aren't local. So and I have a question okay. uh, because we haven't, we didn't go down there this year, but okay, would would the uh oh gosh my phone just went off with the it's recording what i'm saying because i said i have a question um <laughs> would they have shut off the fountains because another great thing about kansas city like we mentioned last time we were talking um kansas city is number two to venice italy for fountains we're, we're a fountain city would they have shut off the fountains because i know sometimes they'll light them up and i'm going are they on? they're usually not on but I wonder if they if they would have left them on because the weather has been so mild or if they, you know, it's a routine seasonal, they turn them off at a certain time. I can't imagine with the magnitude of the fountains as far as quantity, that there would be enough manpower to get that done. Like tomorrow night, we're having a freeze. You better yeah. shut them off. You're going to blow the pipes. I would anticipate they shut them off on ABC day and turn them back on on ABC day. But I do not know the answer to that. I don't, I don't remember either. ever seeing the fountains going actually when I've been down to see the plaza lights, but I don't remember either. I want to say I've seen them running and you know there there was a whole bunch of ice and on, on the bigger ones, you know, when you just first start coming into the area. But mm -hmm. but yeah. I don't know. if anybody in our faithful community, uh Doc and Queenie community know the answer, we'd love to know. We can Google it too, but if you already know the answer because you've been down there, that would be cool. I'm sure they light up the fountain areas. Oh, I know they do. Yeah. yeah. But I don't, I don't know if the water itself is running because like I say, I think that would be rough because most of our seasons uh, this time of year have not been the weather that we've been experiencing. Let's great. just say that. Oh my gosh. It's been great, you know, yeah. but it's good on one end, but in the gardening community, we need at least two weeks of below uh, well, optimal would be below zero to, uh, I know you're good. You're going to, her head's going to fall off you guys, um, to get, we need the frost line to go 18 inches or deeper in order to kill all the bugs. So if we have bit with this mild year, that's going to mean we're all going to be itching and scratching and, <laughs> or I should speak for myself one big bite. <laughs> Speaking of fruitcake bites, yeah, there you go. There you go. Um, but it is amazing, the seasonal uh, requirements, let's say, because this has been so unusual. I do not remember being outside in just a shirt, like no jacket, coat, scarf, gloves, mittens, all that stuff at Christmas ever. And uh, I did not have to travel or uh, even go outside to say goodbye kind of thing with bundled up and way from the door kind of deal. It's just been phenomenal weather in Kansas City. Okay. And so yeah. if, you're, if, you're, if you're watching us from another part of the country slash world, please share with us where, uh, what the temperature has been like during your Christmas yeah. holiday. Be because interesting it's been, to see. Oh my gosh, it's been so unusual here in a good way. I'm thrilled not have to worry about ice and snow as you travel to people's homes, but yes. um, it really has been phenomenal. 
We, yeah. we were talking about it the other day. Um, well, you, and you remember, we'll remember this because it's so unusual. We're from Chicago in 1977, we had 90 degrees on Christmas day. You know, that's something you remember because it's the same thing up there. It's, it's colder and snowier and all that. Not right now. They're, they're very mild right now, but yeah, this is something to remember. I'm, I, I wore shorts to bed the other night. I normally don't wear shorts. I'm like you say, bundled up. I've got 10 layers of covers and I'm like, I'm hot. <laughs> yeah. And that really doesn't happen. And so that has been um, a twist, if you will. And then people start in with all their theories and all these other things. And I'm like, okay, that's great. I'm just talking about the fact that I'm not frozen solid yet. Yes. And I'm thrilled. <laughs> yeah. And still counting it's, down it's, the days to spring. How many days are we at? I know. I, <laughs> Debbie Miller would know. Honestly, yes, Debbie Miller, would. seriously, one of our faithful friends on purpose uh, would definitely know the answer to that because she does keep track because she and I definitely love the spring as soon as that pops, we're good. Um, yep. Your season, though, you mentioned you mentioned gardening. Your season, actually, Doc, for gardening never quits, does it? No, no. Yeah. Um, there's always, you know, with, with normally in January, well, and I'm actually getting ready to... Um, order my seeds for my own garden. Um, but you know, right now it would, it's going through all of the lists. It's going through the seed catalogs. It's going through what worked last year and what didn't work. It's, it's planning out new gardens. We're, we're going to be putting in new gardens this year, which is exciting. So um, we're planning all that. <laughs> and you're like more, yes, more. <laughs> yeah, you know, with rising prices, it's a good time to put in more gardens. So at least I know where my food's coming from. Well, and that's what I was going to say. Prices is one thing, but uh, scary, creepy, weird stuff is another because you pick up something at the store. And I've actually been in grocery stores these last two weeks just because of the kids coming over and that stuff. And so I've actually been in a grocery store, which hasn't happened actually in a couple of years because it's not my gift. So I literally have actually witnessed and seen some of this stuff and you look at it and then you make the mistake of reading the label. And yeah. then you're going, I can't serve that. And then I love the things that you purchase that say expiration date, something, something 2025. So yeah. my brain instantly is going, all right, 2025. How do you know that two years, three years, four years is actually going to make it bad instead of six months, nine months, a year? And so it's very, very bizarre to actually take a look at the labels and wonder what we're ingesting. Oh, when you see the, the label natural flavorings and you've got, <laughs> I don't know, I can't even think of a food and you're like, you know, that those are chemicals, 20 to 25 chemicals to make it taste like whatever item you have there. You're like, really? Huh? Is all your processing take the flavor away? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's sad. It it's seriously sad. is sad. And speaking of labels and, and purchases, did you get to do your traditional, um, what do you do, Chicago pizza for your meal? Um, we, yes, we usually go to a local guy that's actually from Chicago, but he was closed Christmas Eve. So we fell back on our second. Um, did he call you? No, he didn't. He didn't uh, share that. Wow. Because we're probably the only ones that would be there on Christmas Eve buying pizza. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, we fell back, fell back on a, a it's frozen, but it's it's from Chicago. It's one of our favorites. It's called Home Run In. So we bought a whole bunch of Home Run In pizzas. And that's what we had. Which means um, they're frozen. Yes. OK. So you purchase them frozen, not, um, what is that called? Uh, or, baked or partially baked. Oh yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah. That one. Okay. Yeah. They'll do that when you're, when you're in the city and we've done that, we've, we've purchased them. Um, that's beautiful. Queenie, your tree. Thank you. Everything. Um, we've purchased them par baked for the trip and just put them on ice and they usually, you know, oh. it takes 10 hours to get home. So it's, they're, they're okay. And then we pop them in the oven. We have pizza for dinner, <laughs> you know? Well, Chicago um, pizza is a thing. Like I've heard people say, you've got to go to Chicago just for the pizza. And I, I guess that's lovely, but you really do feel that way, don't you? Yeah. And well, and it's a, in, in my opinion, my opinion and my uh, definition, it's a taste. It's not necessarily thick. 
because there are so many good pizzerias and these are all, most of them are family owned um, and everybody has their own thing that, you know, my favorite, as you know, Queenie is a home run in and it's, <laughs> and it's got sausage on it. So she just, yeah, she's, she's trying. Um, yeah. And that's not a thick crust. It's, it's just a regular crust. There's others. There's a couple others. There's Lou Melnati, Lou Melnati's and there's Connie's pizza and a whole bunch. Um, and they put the sauce on top and then the cheese is underneath and all the stuff, you know, and it's about yay thick. So, I mean, there's different. Yeah. But yes, wow. it's, uh, being from there, it's really hard. I'll never forget short story for everybody. One of the first, we were here a month, month and a half and met somebody and he's like, Oh, you guys are from Chicago. I heard they got great pizza. Well, we have great pizza here too. And we're like, really? He goes, yeah. Pizza hut is the best. And we're like, <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, that is funny. Yeah. It's a good thing that it's a local mom and pop shop instead of that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And I, what I actually love, and I doubt this would be any of your Chicago style pizza because you've mentioned, mentioned the sausage thing before. I love cauliflower crust, goat cheese, red yep. pepper, mushroom, massive amounts of onion and garlic. And I doubt that, that would be delicious. Any. I, oh my gosh, I love it so much. Yeah. I love, I love it too much, but, uh, your Chicago places would probably go what, because that's the um, opposite of what you're getting, right? They're they'll venture into, they might not do the cauliflower crust we haven't seen any of them do the gluten-free crust. Um, but you know, the toppings for sure. Yeah. Mushroom, yeah. onion, garlic, and Got um, massive amounts of red pepper. And I just, that is just pig heaven to me. And that would be my choice of any of the places where I go. Now, obviously I've eaten the other things, but um, you can just kind of, um, what do you say? Your taste buds are awakened when you eat real food. When you eat all this other stuff, you kind of go, what just happened? And it's just been phenomenal when people have said on, on uh, social media, I've been watching and they're like, I am so full, I can't walk or I can't move or I can't get off the sofa. And I'm just like, oh my gosh. And it's kind of like we do it to ourselves, I guess. And then uh, last year, I remember posting, oh, pardon me, two years ago, because we were still meeting in person and people would buy treats and thank you for a great year and how fun this is and all those things. So all of a sudden I was getting all kinds of chocolate, 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 chocolate from and, and boxes of it. And so I put on one of my Facebook things that popped up as a memory. Um, if you uh, receive chocolate as a gift and eat it all, does that mean it is calorie free asking for a friend? And so... <laughs> Because I, I really did. In the last bite. Yeah, yeah. So and you throw it away. You throw away the last bite, you should be yeah. good. But I really did. People were feeling guilty about it. And even when you teach us with the naturopathic topic, it's not a guilt conversation. If you're going to pork out tonight, great. Just remember not to pork out again tomorrow. Right. Yeah, it's all choice. You know, everything, as we know, is choices. Everything's a choice. You know, and that and that's also the business piece that you teach. You know, you can choose to do this and try it out. You can choose to do that. You know, yeah, everything's a choice. I would love to go Facebook Live in my group, but I'm but. afraid. Yep. And when they do that, I'm just like, and then of course I use us as an example. Guess what, guys? You you, you can't mess it up. And you, you really can't. Now, the cyber stuff goes weird sometimes. And we've had um, cyber attacks, if you will. And all of a sudden, it will not work no matter what you do. Stand on your head upside down, run through the neighborhood. But it sometimes there's cyber stuff. Internet does go wonky. Remember when um, a pandemic first started and all the kids were uh, virtual and all everybody in the world was now on the Internet, which means our bandwidth was zero. And all of a sudden, we would try to get on Doc and Queenie. And we couldn't anymore because all the kids are home. Plus the parents are home. Plus everybody else is home and all the bandwidth was messed up. And so everybody's like, what do we do? Pivot, hunt and pivot. And look where we are now, actually almost two years later. And people are getting used to some of the nuances that it's not going to work. Well, yeah. your, just move on to something different. And people have gotten a lot more flexible. Well, and it's funny because we were talking about this with our friend that stayed with us. Um, I was talking about you and I with this uh, social media and the groups we've been involved in and yep. new, we've got friends that we've never met in person yet. You know, we keep saying, well, hey, we'll take a 
we'll take a national international trip to visit um because <laughs> we're just we're givers <laughs> yeah because we're we'll, we'll we'll grace you with our presence yeah, whether sure they want what, us or uh, not i hope <laughs> they don't know my address there's nobody home nobody's answering the door yeah, for me. yeah. imagine that doc yeah <laughs> but um you know just just that piece because he he was fascinated he was like really i said yeah we've got friends in california and vegas and wisconsin and tennessee you know just rattle it off and these are people we've never met i mean it's just been yeah it's it's punt and pivot it's change it's always change um you know and it and it's always it's always fun too with this platform what you learn from others you know i mean it's it, I think it opens it up even more the, the learning experience if you're if you're open open you know open to that um, because we're crossing ways with people internationally and that's a whole different you know that those different cultures different perspectives and then just the business us with the businesses there's so many neat businesses out there unique businesses business people. Um, so I, I, you know, this is the, the good that comes out of the bad. I think this is great. I actually do too. Uh, you were mentioning earlier in one of our other calls about apples and oranges. Um, would you like to elaborate a bit on that? Apples and oranges. Well, I was just, uh, I think I, I'm trying to remember our, the, the conversation, but basically, um, you know, we could put it in the perspective of I'm speaking, you know, and I was going to bring an apple and orange down here and I forgot. I, I, I love this apple and I'm telling you about this apple and you've got an orange and you're trying to tell me about the orange um, and we're both going in different directions. Um, and I, I, from, from what I remember, you know, it, it's, always, it's always interesting. People are passionate about what they know or, or what their story is. Um, and sometimes the extent of they're not listening to you. So I'm holding up my apple going, this apple is red. And they're over here going, well, this orange is better than that apple. This, this, or, and I'm like, I'm not even talking about if it's better. I'm just commenting on the, the apple is, is red. Um, you know, that piece listening is big, being open to learning is big. Um, you know, and then segueing back to what we were just talking about the networking across, across the world. Listening is big. You get to know people. Um, you know, sharing the information that you know. Um, and, and with without, um, I had a recent experience. Uh, somebody disagrees with with me, and we're doing apples and oranges. And I just kind of gave up because she's not understanding. I'm talking about the apple. She's she's on the orange train, and it's just like okay, you know, it's that. What's the phrase? Agree to disagree, I guess. I don't even have a disagreement because I'm talking about something totally different. But but it's great practice in, in networking online to listen and to learn from people and to share. But I guess, you know, pull the tip, tip out of there. Um, don't shove what you know down somebody's throat. Um, you know, yes, you're passionate about what you do and you may be experienced beyond, but you know, if people aren't there yet, you, you can't you all you all you can do is share did i miss anything on that queenie <laughs> well it's back to the same thing about we want it more than they do and yeah. so i want your health your wellness your soft skin your whatever it is chemical free home more than you do and so as soon as i realized how that was working i had to back it off and okay. speaking actually of um, in my case my company is a magic the congan water company we have had a ginormous explosion of 6A in our little network here. So Daryl Wicker, the debt-free Santa, actually became 6A recently. And we just wanted to awesome. applaud him from this community. Yay. It is such a big deal. It's the top level in our company, which is so awesome. Now there's a lot of dashes and pluses and all that stuff afterwards. But to be able to be 6A is literally the pinnacle of our company. And that means that you are definitely passionate about sharing this technology with other people. And we just wanted to congratulate Daryl for having achieved yes. that because it's a very big deal. Yes, Santa Claus. Yeah, <laughs> yes. every time you see Santa Claus, it's like, I know Santa. Yes. Yeah, so that is great. But that really is so fun to see people accomplishing first goals, second goals, whatever that looks like. And just to remember, like you said, apples and oranges. I want to talk about vitamins. I want to talk about water. I want to talk about gardening. I want to talk about naturopathy. 
What does that look like? Are you actually listening to hear and absorb or are you listening to respond? And it really is, an, it's a test. It's a, a skill in networking actually. And right. uh, I think that that is a beautiful example of that. Apples and oranges, that um, scenario is not new to many of us. And it's very cool that you realize that, first of all, you're not going to change their mind. But second of all, they're no. not listening because they're not receiving what you're saying. They're still stuck on their orange. Yeah. And I'm, you know, I'm not, um, I don't, I'm not a fighter. I don't pick a fight. I just, you know, you, you, you give your information and you have to move on. Um, yeah. If it's not a good fit, you can't, you can't make it happen. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You can't make that happen. Um, I do have some exciting news I want to share and I want to make sure I'm not speaking out of turn here in case I got the word, don't talk about it. Um, Michelle Cruz is part of our Dynamic Faithful Friends on Purpose, and she hosts a, a group called Coffee Club several times a month. And for January 11th, uh, I think it's a Tuesday. Pay attention, Catherine. I think it is a Tuesday. Uh, yes, it is. And January 11th at 11 a.m. Central Time, Michelle is hosting in her coffee club a recommendations party in LinkedIn. So we just wanted to invite everyone certainly here. Uh, reach out to Michelle Cruz uh, for Coffee Club and she'll give you the Zoom link. And it really is just a fun way to learn how to expand your LinkedIn network, how to put yourself top of mind while you're edifying another person. And that's such a perfect mesh doc for what we talk about here. It's not a matter of competition and I'm better than you, you're better than me. It's not, that doesn't work in my head. First of all, I feel that we're all in this together. And if one of us can learn one more thing and two more things and teach another person, it's phenomenal to me, the amounts of groups that have a leader, absolutely, but strong leaders usually pull in other leaders to train their team because you listen differently to an outsider. It's just, it's the nature of the beast. Well, and if you look at, and I'm just thinking as you're speaking with the leader piece, if you look at a leader, they don't argue, they no serve point. others, mm -hmm. they're open to learning. And like you say, they attract other people because they serve others, they're open to le learning, they don't argue, they don't fight, uh, they lead. I see a theme. <laughs> By example. <laughs> Yeah, it's, yeah. Just, it's just so funny. And Michelle has been a perfect example, certainly of leadership and growth. Yes. And I think about the friends that we have met, faithful friends on purpose, as we say, but it's back to that same drill. The, the people that we meet in our uh, daily lives, in our world, in our networking experience by stretching and, and expanding our network, that has been so amazing because we can know a few hundred people in Kansas City, a few thousand people in the Midwest maybe a couple uh, tens of thousands as we expand across the country. But then if your business is something that can go global, or if you want to learn from other cultures to take that learning into our local market, it's an entirely different world. And it really has been phenomenal to be able to play ball in a big arena. And uh, I think about this a lot when I invite people to some of the groups I attend. Oh, no, no, I could never do that. It's too big. And I'm always like, um, first of all, it's not a test. It's an opportunity for free networking. Second of all, if you're in your local market in person, that is fantastic that we get to meet in person again. But then if your business is something that you can do, not just geographically close in, but literally either nationally or even internationally, and this is not a test. You're not on stage. This is not tryouts. This is just talking about what you do and learning from other people and their techniques. I never understand the word no for this well, one. Well, and I, I always take, you know, Happy Neighborhood Project as a time to practice. Oh, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I don't know what I'm doing if I network in person. So if I practice online when I'm in person, it won't be so scary. That's, that's correct. You know, it, it gets, it gets, you know, you keep hearing yourself you, you, and I, I do it all the time. I try different things with different people and just, you just sit back and look and see what kind of reaction, see what kind of questions you get. You go, huh? Okay. I never thought of that. You know, I'll have to add that next time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but it's, I, I don't it's, think it's a pass fail. And no. that's always so funny to me that people go, I can't do that. And I'm just like, well, okay, then. Well, and when you say you can't, you just shot yourself in the foot. 
I mean, really, when it comes down to it, you've just, okay, you won't. If you say you can't, you can't. What is 2022 going to look like if the apple and orange thing is still happening? Right. If the can't thing is still happening? If the getting ready to get ready thing is still happening? If the I'm afraid thing is still happening? What is 2022 going to look like? And I shudder to think that the people in our, in our Doc and Queenie community, especially, because this is where my heart is, stay stuck. What, what is that going to look like? And we can't unstuck them for them. So we can't do it for them. Right. And you can't, if you're stuck, you're stuck. We can't unstuck you. And I know the word is unstick, but we really can't. And it's back to <laughs> oh, that. So that's thing. really good English there, Queenie. I know. I, I, went to, I went to college for this. And so, but it's back to that same drill. Do you want to grow? Do you want to expand? Or do you, are you totally happy with complacency? And if you are, that's awesome. Congratulations. It's like you've achieved your pinnacle. That's terrific. But if you actually have other things to do in your life, then for me, uh, Zoom might be the wave of the future. What do you think about that? Are we back to going in person or, or what do you think? Is Zoom going to do it? You know, I think it might be a combination, but I think it's going to be leaning towards the Zoom because we are now, businesses are, you know, remote. My, most of them are remote. Of course, you know, there's a lot that you can't be, do remote, but a majority of them are remote. I think I think it's the Zoom um, is is probably going to be heavy. It's going to be heavy on that. Certain people who shall remain <clears throat> nameless um, Uh-oh. <laughs> greeted the Amazon Prime delivery person at the door as they were tracking a specific package. So as, oh, I'm, did they scare them? <laughs> As they greeted the delivery driver, the delivery driver happened to mention, I've been at this house a lot this week. <laughs> That's good. And That's so good. I thought, isn't that a lovely thing to share with others? But the bigger thing is we don't shop the same way either. No. Push a button, open your front door, magic happens. And everything is different. Did with the you exception? Think? Go I'm ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. With actually after Christmas, you see all the after Christmas sales and the January white sales and all this stuff. You ask a young person, are you going to get anything this year at the January white sale? And they're going, what? what? <laughs> yeah. You need sheets and pillows and all that stuff. You push a button. It magically appears on your door the next day. What, what is a January white sale? They don't know what this means. The day after Christmas, you would not be able to move through the malls. How many people have been in a mall lately? You will not be able to move through the malls because they're so crowded with after Christmas sales. What? Yep. Uh -huh. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, I was going to confess that I did 90% of my shopping online. Oh, seriously, and, 90? And, and the only, I did have to go out because of our guest. It was a last minute. Uh -huh. So I did have to go out, which I hated <laughs> because it was crowded. Oh my gosh, it was totally crowded. The yeah. people who did wait till last minute kind of can't help it because like I have literally seen the delivery drivers in my neighborhood nine or 10 o'clock at night this week for real. And I feel so badly for them because hello, I'm sure the money's terrific, but uh, it's back to that same drill. You want some time off in your brain and certainly with your families or just alone, whatever that looks like, just to, to, right. to veg out and detach. But I saw these trucks because my, my ring thing dings all the time. And I always click on to see what's up and it's, it's delivery drivers. And I just thought, oh my goodness. And so I just, that part has changed. Networking in person has changed. Push a button and get something delivered has changed. You need a training for something. You go to YouTube and get it. You do a Google search for this. Everything is different now. And it's a matter of if you're not used to that yet and you're waiting for things to go back to normal, what do you think about that doc? I, I think we're on the, you know, as they say, the new normal, I think, you know, and I are both our businesses. We've got books. Those are eBooks. That's a new one too. I mean, you know, so who knows what it's going to be next? No, I think it's, uh, I think this is uh, here to stay. Ooh, I like that Queenie. That's very cool. Thank you, doc. And I really feel exactly like you said, if people have not punted and pivoted yet, 
if something's going to be different, hello, March 2020, and then April 2020 didn't change back to normal, and May 2020 still didn't fix it, Christmas 2020 still didn't happen. And here we are almost now March of 2022, hello. If nothing has changed that way back to how it was before the pandemic, possibly it's time to do the, the uh, self-introspection thing and do the punt and pivot part. So um, that's why I was just sharing today when you did the apples, oranges, and especially, I really thank you for your tribute to the National Fruitcake Day. <laughs> You know what we're going to be getting as gifts now, don't you? you oh, know? no, please. We insist you don't have to do that. Oh, you know what's coming next, don't you? Because you may get it back next year. <laughs> we will keep your names. Yeah, we will keep your names. We know who but, you are. Yeah, and, and think about this. Punt and pivot with Zoom. What have you learned how to do differently on Zoom that you weren't doing two years ago? You know, oh, gosh, when it first got shut down, people were pushing buttons going, I can save the chat. And then they're going, I can post my link. I can change my backgrounds, even if I don't have a green screen. I can record this video. I can upload it to my YouTube channel. Wow. And all of these things. And oh. all of a sudden, we're here. Yeah, you're, you're talking Zoom, the whole thing, you know, like you and I with the other you're not as uh, into Instagram as I am. I mean, I never would have dreamed I'd be doing Instagram. And I hit a milestone the other day, Queenie. What'd you get? 10,000 10, views. 10,000 views. Holy. Let me get dipping, it. It piece... dipping chocolate. Oh, wow. Was that that bacon? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Dr. Laura. I'm sure it was delicious. Was Take that? Deep breath, you'll be okay. There you go. <laughs> Was that the bacon chocolate stuff that you? No, like, it wasn't the bacon chocolate. I know I got some interesting comments on that. No, this was this was the truffles. This was the peanut butter. Oh truffles. no, yum. Okay, that's a little too sweet. Which for I'm me, sure those are less bacon. calorie wise too. Yeah. Maybe yeah. we can do bacon peanut butter chocolate truffles next year. That's a great idea, Queenie. Oh, Put a piece I'm of bacon sure in the middle. Your family, yeah. Thank you. Your family will be so thrilled. They're thrilled. I, you know, I had one piece of bacon. That's my, yeah, <laughs> it's nitrate free. Um. <laughs> no, um, I have a question since we're talking about that. Yes. When you pick up a piece of bacon with chocolate on it, um, does yes. one eat the chocolate end first? That's yes. Okay. I was just trying to get a grip on the topic because I can't combo that yet. You start but, with the creamy milk chocolate, which I know you don't like milk chocolate either. Um, and you, it's, it's a sweet salty and it's hickory bacon, hickory smoked bacon. So thick cut. So if anybody's going to do that next year, yeah. Hickory thick cut smoked bacon uh, and you dip it in milk chocolate. And that's, and I came up with that several years ago because I had leftover chocolate from my truffles. And I'm like, what am I going to do with this? So I was throwing nuts in there and, and I'm like oh I think I'm gonna dip some bacon and the it works. The very first thing I would think <laughs> if I had leftover baking chocolate is I think I'm gonna dip bacon in this that's my very first go-to. <laughs> well yeah. <laughs> Oil and water my friend. Oil yes. and water. Oh my guess, gosh. Guess what Queenie? What doc? It's time to go again. We oh just get gosh. started. Seriously. I know. This is so fast, honestly, and I, well, that's, it's just fun to talk about everything, certainly that happened over this past week, and uh, so I guess it's time for you to take us home, Doc. But before, of course, and I'm doing well, five more minutes, I'm famous for this, five more minutes, just five, five two more minutes. Um, I want to talk real fast, get this okay. in, and maybe our faithful friends on purpose can write in, in the comments or let us know, and maybe we'll do a post also. What is your word for 2022? And what okay, is your word, okay. Queenie? My word for 2022, Dr. Laura, is consistency. Awesome. And my word, Queenie, I almost called you by your first name, but <laughs> don't want to confuse everybody, That's is seriously. inspiration. So, oh my gosh. Okay. So we'll be consistently inspiring yeah. in 2022 <laughs> with Doc and Queenie, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm sure too. We're going to talk about fruitcake and chocolate bacon and all kinds of stuff. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, well, I will, I will take it home so everybody can go back to their day. 
So thank you everyone for joining Doc and Queenie Facebook Live at <laughs> at high noon. We yeah. also have Bible trivia on Thursday nights at 7 p.m. Everybody is welcome. You don't have to be a scholar. It's just a great way to dig into the word and learn some more. Um, and hopefully we'll see you there. But if not, we will see you right back here on Monday. Have a fantastic week. Yes, next year, it'll be next year. So enjoy the rest of 2021. And we can't wait for next year and what, you know, what is ahead. We're, we're excited, aren't we, Queenie? Absolutely. I can't wait, actually, Doc. And Thank Friday's you. the countdown. So definitely a uh, happy new year to everyone. Happy new year. Thank you, Queenie. We'll catch Thank everybody you, later. Bye now. Bye-bye.